The entire purpose of this video is to normalize being emotional as an INTJ because I personally hate the stereotype that you see online and you read all over the internet that we're emotionless people. I think one of the reasons why we get our emotionless stereotype is because we're not really sure what to do when we engage someone else that's feeling emotions. And also we have never really learned how to develop our own mental process in order to deal with our own emotions so that we know how to help other people. INTJs are very good at looking calm when we're freaking out in the inside. I think the best way to explain what INTJs go through whenever they're in their emotion is that we're just unequipped to deal with that concept. Everything that we do in our life, we have some type of blueprint that we've created based off of collecting data using SE and, and then categorizing it using NI so that we can engage with other content that are very similar to that. When it comes down to emotions, we feel emotions a lot, but unless we had someone who taught us how to deal with emotions and how to express it, how to compartmentalize it and how to deal with it head on, it's going to be a very, very foreign concept to us. My parents are first generation Asian American. So talking about our feelings and being emotional is not a very common topic within our family. Actually, I don't ever remember talking about it at all. INTJs are very empathetic people. We just show empathy in a very different way than what most common types show. Instead of being there, meeting someone at the same level and emotion that they're feeling, we feel their emotions and then try to figure out what the root cause is so that we can fix for them or at least be able to guide that person towards the root cause so that they can fix it themselves. That's why whenever you hear an INTJ talk about their master plan or their life goal, it typically has to do with something that will improve society, humanity, or the people that they care about. Rarely will you ever hear a master plan or a life goal from INTJ being very self-centered. The self-centered part of their plan is that they might believe that they're the only person capable of bringing that plan to life. Outside of that, it typically has something to do with something or someone they care about. INTJs are one of the best types in order to read other people and their emotions based off of how long we have spent trying to figure out our own emotions. And also we spend so much time collecting data and collecting just any type of information we have on our family members that we're one of the best types to know when things are actually off of them. The caveat is that this only applies to people that we're comfortable with and have previous data on. If we're engaging with people we've never met before or someone that's brand new, you might as well just throw us in a pool full of sharks because we're not gonna be able to swim or survive. Till this day, I'm still unable to pick up whether someone is flirting with me or whether they're just being nice because in my little brain, if I don't have data, I feel like everyone's just being nice to me. Additionally, I feel like the INTJ stereotype that you see online only applies to the younger, less mature INTJ with less life experience because I can relate to it when I was younger, but now that I'm a little bit older, it's far from the truth. We also tend to recluse ourselves into solitude whenever we need to figure out a problem. We're not the type that openly express our emotions or our problems to other people until we're ready to engage with other people and get their insights. Lastly, we're very particular with who we open up to. And I think the best way to explain that is to use an example. I've defined X to be the issue that has caused me a lot of stress. And friend Y is the best person that I know that deals with those types of issues based off of the data that I have of that friend. So for this specific scenario, I will only go to friend Y in order to gain that person's insight to help me better understand what I'm going through and how to get out of it. I'm going to go to friend Y in secrecy. And I'm going to ask friend Y to keep it just between the two of us because I don't want anyone to know that I'm going through that issue. Because for some dumb reason, I feel that being emotionally vulnerable is weakness. And I don't like feeling weak. But the beauty of being human is the breadth of emotions that we're able to experience. Whether you see it as a negative or a positive, there is happiness and misery. I see a lot of videos out there that tries to explain emotions to INTJ using logic. I, I don't get what the purpose of that is. We're not robots. And it makes it seem as if being emotional is a foreign concept to INTJs. We're very emotional creatures. We just don't know how to deal with it. INTJ are emotional because FI is in their third stack, so they don't know how to use it. INTJs are emotional because they ignore TE and that's when they get in their loop. The best way that I've learned how to deal with emotion is actually hearing people talk about their stories, about their emotions and what they're going through in order for me to decipher, oh, that's what I'm going through and this is how someone deals with it. 
That's the reason why I love art. That's the reason why I love music. That's why I love literature and movies and anything that has to do with other people engaging with what seem to be very nonchalant or very simple issues because it's not simple for everyone. And I learned so much watching other people deal with it. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to give you my personal stories about examples of when I was emotional and just how I dealt with it. Because again, INTJs are emotional and I want to make sure that I create a platform where we're able to talk about emotions and not get downvoted like it does on Reddit. So here are a few stories from the life of John. I was a crybaby when I was a child. Some may argue that it's because I'm a younger brother and that I have older siblings, but I think that's about a quarter of the truth. There are certain moments in my life I'll never forget because it just blew my mind that someone that I care about so much would say this. Some of the issues I've been thinking about it since like forever now. I didn't know how to deal with it, so I just took it and recluse. The first example was when I was about seven or eight years old. I was a crybaby, like I mentioned earlier, and my aunt actually made fun of me. She said while we were eating lunch one day that I cry so much that one day I'm going to find a wife that I want to marry and I will cry until my mom actually approves of that person. Auntie, that hurt. Another example is just dealing with my siblings. My sister and sister-in-law, an INFP and an INFJ, both called me the most emotional person in our family. And I have a family full of feelers. The last example that I have is my older brother calling me emotional because I keep listening to the same songs over and over until I get sick and tired of it. I grew up when MTV had TRL. So every morning before I went to school, they always played the same music because it was always ranked the very similar way. And Maroon 5's She Will Be Loved has hit me in the core because it made me feel emotions I've never felt before. And I was trying to decipher what it all meant. I'm feeling things that I never thought I could, and when I did, I want to feel it. It makes me feel human, and again, I want to create some type of process, so whenever I'm in that situation, I know what to do, because I don't want to stand outside in a pouring rain waiting for someone to notice me. The thing is, yes, I do get emotional being around people that I'm comfortable with, because I feel like my guard can be let down, and they can see me for who I am, especially when it comes down to friends and family that I've grown up with. They see me at my worst, so why shouldn't they see me at even worse or something that I feel is weak. What I learned after all those example is that even if you try to bottle up your emotions and not show it, it always seeps through. Not showing emotion is actually showing a type of emotion, which is very counterintuitive because the only time we show emotions because we try to hide our emotions, that's the only data that they have of us so whenever they think about us, when it comes down to any type of emotional outburst outside of being balanced and being constant in like teeter-tottering between emotions, that's what they see. So it makes sense that they would think that I'm very emotional. It also makes sense that I have a lot of emotional outbursts because when it comes down to being emotional, that's not something I'm comfortable with. That's something that I don't want anyone else to see. Another thing that I learned about myself is that whenever I'm in a rut, I recluse. Again, I seek solitude because that's the best thinking that I could do whenever I don't have any type of outside stimuli and I'm able to focus on one single topic. I've heard from so many friends and family that because I do that, in the attachment theory, I'm an avoidant type. I'm not here to argue whether they're right or wrong. What I do want to emphasize is even though we try not to show emotions, emotions will eventually sh it'll, it'll come out. And it'll come out in different ways. And if you're trying to keep this image, which most INTJs are trying to do, it's best that you embrace your emotions and then show it from time to time. Not only when you're at your worst, but just, you know, outwardly verbalize it or do something that is more towards FI instead of SE or NI or TE that you want other people to think of. Introverted feeling is a hell of a cognitive function. And I know I've said that multiple times in every one of my videos that I put it out so far, but that's honestly how I feel. FI is so odd. Sometimes I wonder whether INTJs are the only type that feels this way about it because I feel as if INFPs and ENFPs, the ones where they have FI as their first second stack, 
they seem to know what the what they're feeling or maybe i might be wrong leave a comment if you're not an itj you're one of those and let us know how you engage with fi when having a conversation with people you want to engage introverted intuition sure let's talk about theories you want to talk about conspiracies and how power is distributed let's have that conversation you want to engage with expert thinking and criticize my work ethics Sure, let's hear about it. Whether you might think it's a positive or negative, at least I'm able to grow and become a better person based off of your feedback, if I believe that it's good feedback. You wanna engage introverted feelings and talk shit about my family? Oh, hell no, You no, that's a line you never cross. No one talks shit about my family. I don't care if my brother went up during your wedding and gave a speech that was inappropriate, Grace. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because he's my brother and no one could talk shit about my brother besides me. Oh, you think my friendship with Billy Bob is one-sided towards him? I don't care. You know why? Because he's my friend. I have decided that he's my friend based off of a lot of things I've taken into consideration. And no matter what happens, he will always be my friend unless he does something stupid like talk shit about my family. Grace. INTJs use logic in so many aspects of our lives that it seems very counterintuitive that there are certain hills that we're willing to die on for FI. For me personally, there's a few, universal healthcare, women's reproductive rights, more representation of minorities, and also um, more coverage on men's suicidal rates and also like their homeless rates. We need more help for men who are out there. It's very difficult for anyone to sway me otherwise when it comes down to those topics that I have used FI to determine that I actually care about. But it is possible if they logic me enough and hit me in the feels. And I think the key point of this little section that I wanna point out is that as an INTJ, I wanna believe that I'm using logic as to how I arrive to these different stances I care so much about. But I know that the logic is actually being led by FI. FI is telling me the feels this way about it, and then I'm seeking information in order to make those topics something that I actually care about. But I also do think this, these topics are basic human truths that we should just let everyone live life however they want to, and we should also take care of people. Being a thinking type in Myers Briggs, it's a blessing and a curse because we're able to actually compartmentalize certain emotions, push it in the background, and eventually address it at a later date whenever it becomes more convenient for us. The problem for INTJs is that we tend to push problems so much in the background that imagine a bubble and we just keep adding to the bubble that eventually it freaking bursts. And when that bubble bursts, there's bits and pieces of so many different issues that it's very hard to decipher which issue is the biggest issue that's causing you the most stress at this moment for the bubble to burst. I think the best analogy that I have for whenever the bubble bursts is that whenever the bubble bursts for an ITJs, it's like we have millions of different pieces and we're working on putting back together multiple different puzzles at the exact same time to figure out exactly what's been causing the most stress for us. So I want to end the video with a few processes that I developed for myself in order to keep the bubble from getting too big. I do wanna add that I've never been the best at dealing with my emotions. These are all of these steps that I have learned from my friends and family, reading articles online, watching movies, that I've realized works best for me. And one thing that I want everyone to realize is that no matter how much you try, no matter how many systems you have in place or how good you get at this, your bubble will burst from time to time. It's not that you're doing anything wrong, that's just life. Tip number one, which is probably the easiest, is just listen to the people that actually care about you. I've lost track of how many times my friends and family have told me that I feel off that day or something seems a little imbalanced. I remember just shrugging them off and thinking, oh, you guys are crazy. Only to realize a few days later or a week or so later that yes, I was upset at something that day. I've learned to understand that when people address you in your feelings, it's because they actually care about you because it's a very personal thing. So I've learned to take their criticism or take their insights and actually start looking at it whenever it's provided. Because if people don't care about you, why would they tell you those things? Tip number two, this is a little more advanced because you need a little more time to understand yourself. When you become a little more conscious of yourself as a person and how you deal with issues, listen whenever things feel a little off. You may have responsibilities that you're dealing with at the moment that's 
preventing you from taking a moment to kind of think about what you're going through. But unless you're working on something that is life-threatening or potentially can ruin someone's life, you can set time aside in order to start feeling that feeling. You are the best person to know whether something is right or wrong. Do whatever you need to do in order to start getting your emotions. For me personally, I put on headphones and I just lean back on my chair and close my eyes and just relax. I do that at work, I do that at home. That's how I'm able to engage my emotions before adding it to the bubble. Set time aside because your mental health is everything in life. The last tip that I have is to just set time aside throughout the week in order to recalibrate. Some people, they call this meditation. I'm not sure what I call it, but all I know is whenever I have moments like this where I set up an hour on every Sunday before football starts, I think about my feelings and then engage every ticks or every red flags that I receive throughout the week. This is the way that I prevent the bubble from getting too big because I start putting the puzzles together before it even gets to that bubble. All right, INTJs, that's my thoughts about being emotional as an INTJ. Let's push towards being more vocal about being emotionally expressive. Stop downvoting people whenever they talk about emotions. Stop criticizing people whenever they say that they're feeling a certain way. We're humans, we feel things. INTJs, get attuned with your emotions. It's okay to be human.